So we're right in the middle of Techtober and we're here to talk about the Galaxy Note 10 Plus tonight. But before we do, quick PSA about our last video. Uh, the comments and the subscribers have been through the roof since we posted about that giveaway and we really love the support but I believe there's some small confusion about what we're actually giving away. So unfortunately, we're not giving away any smartphones. We're giving away cases for particular smartphones. And those smartphones are the Pixel 3a XL, the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro, and the iPhone 11 Pro Max, the iPhone 10s, and I believe that's it. So in terms of what we're actually giving away, they're cases, not smartphones. But don't think that you guys subscribing is actually going to waste because the bigger this channel gets, the more stuff we get from companies better stuff and we'll give those away as well. So we definitely love all the love and subscriptions, but just know that we're giving away cases, not phones, but you never know. If we get more subscribers and we get more stuff in, we just may start giving away cooler stuff. So it'd be super easy for me to just sit here and tell you that the Galaxy Note 10 Plus is one of the best Android phones of 2019, and it probably will stay as one of the best phones of 2019, but that would be not only doing you guys a disservice, but doing the phone itself a disservice as well. So let's talk about what exactly makes the Note 10 Plus such a great smartphone. Leading off with arguably the thing that Samsung does best is the display. So the Note 10 Plus clocks in at 6.8 inches with a Quad HD Plus resolution that clocks in at 3040 by 1440 in terms of dimensions. And DisplayMate ran a test in terms of overall display quality, color reproduction, and they said that this display is virtually indistinguishable from perfect. And I gotta say, that claim absolutely holds true. In terms of outdoor visibility, the display gets super, super bright, probably one of the brightest in any smartphone out there. So the display quality is top notch. And speaking of notches, there are none. There's a single hole punch in the middle, which I believe fits in a little bit better compared to a phone like the S10 that had it on the right side of the display. When the hole punch is in the middle, there's not really any notification icons that take up space in the middle. They're all on the left and right, and having it in the center just looks a little bit more uniform. Build quality is also fantastic, and all the things you expect from Samsung are also present on this phone, such as dual stereo speakers featuring Dolby Atmos, an in-display fingerprint sensor, and a lot of curved glass. Now, one thing to note on this particular phone, all the buttons are now on the left side of the phone. And I know I actually got a lot of flack from last year's Note review because I complained about the Bixby button, but I think Samsung listened. They actually took away the Bixby button. So all you have now in terms of buttons on the phone is a power button and a volume rocker. They're just both on the left. Now that'll take some time to get used to. I'm normally used to volume rocker being on the left and power button being on the right. And another thing you'll have to get used to is the default option for long pressing the power button is like the iPhone, it will launch Bixby, but you can go into the power settings and change that to just power it off. So Bixby has not been a nuisance on this phone and I've been able to just use the Google Assistant in terms of a virtual assistant and I really like that as well. So 2019 has easily been the year of having multiple cameras on the back of a smartphone and the Note 10 Plus is no exception. It's got five total cameras, four on the back, one on the front. And I wanna spend some time talking about the four on the back. So you have your triple camera lens set up. It's vertical, it looks really nice, especially compared to the iPhone and the upcoming Pixel's super bulky square design. You have a 16 megapixel ultra wide lens and two 12 megapixel lenses. One is your standard wide angle and the other one is your telephoto lens. Now that fourth camera that I told you about is not in the triple camera setup. It's actually to the right of it underneath the flash sensor. And that's going to be a depth vision camera, which allows the Note 10 Plus and the Note 10 Plus 5G to take portrait video. In terms of the portrait video itself, it's a really nice concept but in execution, it doesn't look too great. It's good at actually blurring out the background and trying its best to focus on the subject, but once you start moving, things kind of get a little wonky and it doesn't look too great. And I could definitely see some examples where it would look really cool, so don't get me wrong on that front. But in terms of the overall camera focus, I'll let you guys be the judge here. I took plenty of photos and videos on the Note 10 Plus, and I will leave it with this. The performance is good, but once you stack it up to a phone like the iPhone 11 Pro Max, it doesn't exactly hold up. So my best summary of the Note 10 Plus's camera system is it's good, not great. In some of the photos and videos that I took, I noticed that it was trying its best to draw in a lot of light and a lot of times that will overexpose a lot of subjects or even not do too well in terms of balancing shadows or handling shadows overall. And you guys should hopefully see some of that come through in the photos. But like I said, 
Good, not great. If you are stuck with this phone and you have to go out for a night, it's not gonna let you down. You'll only notice its shortcomings whenever you compare it to some of the best smartphone cameras on the market. Now, while the camera is good at best, two aspects of the phone that really shine through are its performance and its battery life. So let's talk about the internals of the Note 10 Plus. You're working with a Snapdragon 855 paired to 12 gigs of RAM if you have the Note 10 Plus. If you have the standard Note 10, it's eight, but either way, eight or 12 gigs of RAM is pretty significant in a smartphone these days. And in terms of battery on the Note 10 Plus, you have 4,300 milliamp hours. Now, performance on this phone, obviously whenever you think about 12 gigs of RAM and the latest Snapdragon processor, well, actually not really the latest, the 855 Plus is out, but Samsung had this phone in production before that processor came out. So I'm gonna go ahead and give them some credit and say it's the latest. Um, the phone is a trailblazer, and I'm talking it handles anything that you need it to do. It's basically Samsung's version of a super productive cell phone. It even has the ability to plug into a computer or a monitor of some sort and act as a mobile computer. It's got tons of storage and anything you wanna do. I even have games on it like NBA 2K Mobile and Pokemon Go, and the phone doesn't skip a beat whenever you run games on it. So anything you need the phone to do, performance-wise, it's totally, totally capable. And in terms of battery life, I'm easily getting six hours or more of screen on time consistently every single day. I will take it off charge at seven o'clock in the morning and by like 10 or 11 o'clock at night, the phone still has anywhere from like 55 to 60% battery life. So if you're using it lightly, it's definitely a two day phone. Um, but if you get accessories with this phone, like a battery bank or a fast charger, which Samsung offers both, and we'll touch on those accessories later, the phone is, is going to be a battery champion. It's so much of a battery champion that Samsung has brought back the wireless reverse power share, which will allow you to wirelessly charge other devices that can take a wireless charge. So Samsung was pretty confident in the battery life of this phone, and I gotta say, it's a champion. There's honestly not a lot that I would want changed on this phone. Throughout my use with it, there were only two things that I could think of, and they're both really personal preference whenever you actually sit down and think about it. But one, I would have really liked Samsung to include a 90 hertz refresh rate on the display. Now 60 hertz is totally fine, it's basically the standard, but whenever you have phones like the OnePlus 7 Pro that use 90 hertz and now the upcoming Pixel 4, once you use 90 hertz, it's really tough to go back and see the value in 60 hertz. But like I said, that's more of personal preference. I just know that Samsung typically will save the biggest upgrades of the year for the Note line, and it would have been a better way to distinguish the Note from the S10 Plus, not just with the S Pen, but with a 90 hertz refresh rate display. And the second change that I would make is just making their software a little closer to stock. One of the biggest reasons why phones like the Pixel and OnePlus are super popular is not just because of their performance, but because they use near vanilla Android in terms of software. Now, One UI is really, really good. And again, this is probably more of a personal preference thing, but I can't imagine a phone like this that would have incredible battery life, incredible build quality, solid cameras, the best display, and also a near stock Android experience, which in turn would probably bring faster software updates. So. If Samsung were to make that change, I mean, you're basically looking at a near perfect smartphone, but again, that's just my opinion. So it's more of like recommendations for a near perfect phone. Speaking of that S Pen, it's back and obviously it's better than ever. Every single time Samsung brings out a new Note, they'll typically introduce a new feature to the S Pen. This year around, they've added the ability to use air gestures by flicking your wrist. Now, when I first saw this, I thought it was, again, cool in concept, but more of on the gimmicky side, I never found myself actually using the air gestures to control things like volume up and down for music and videos or like swiping through a slideshow presentation like they showed. I just don't have those type of use case scenarios for the phone. For me, it's still easier to use the volume rocker than it is to pull out the pen, push and hold the button, flick the wrist in order to actually get the volume to go up and down. I just didn't see the use case scenario there but it's still cool in the fact that it allows you to do things like make GIFs with it and use live drawing features built into Samsung software. So it's just an elevated type of experience that you just don't have on any other phone. So while that new feature is gimmicky, the S Pen is still really, really awesome to have and it's still by far the most defining feature of the Note itself. The Galaxy Note 10 Plus comes in four colors, this really incredible Aura Glow, it also comes in Aura White, Aura Black, and Aura Blue, which is a color that you guys saw in our unboxing, if you guys actually watched it. If you didn't, click one of these 
pop-ups here, either on the left or the right. I can't remember which one it is. I think it's this one, but click that one. It'll take you to our unboxing so you guys can see that color. And the phone itself starts at $1,099. Now that is super, super hefty in terms of price tag. Is it actually worth it? I would say even at that price, yes, just because of how many things the Note 10 Plus does really well. But at the deal that I got it for, it's definitely worth it. I had the Note 10 or the Note 9, I'm sorry, from last year, and I was able to trade that in towards my Note 10 Plus this year. And I got not only the Note 10 Plus, but a whole bunch of accessories, which are gonna be handed to me now. 45 watt super fast charger, got this for $25 after trade in. 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack that charges with USB-C and has fast wireless charging built in and silver Galaxy Buds that match the Note 10 Plus really, really well. I got all these accessories, plus another one that you can't see right now, a 12 watt standing wireless charging pad. That's at home right now. I got someone in the studio looking for it. But uh, all those accessories plus the Note 10 Plus for $550 after trade-in. So if you were to bump into me on the street and tell me that you can get all this stuff plus the Note 10 Plus for $550 after trade-in, I would definitely say no hesitation, order it right now. So if you have a phone to trade in, the Note 10 Plus is definitely worth it because you'll start saving. Samsung's offering huge trade in promos right now towards their phones. So take advantage of that while you still can. But even at that retail price, I would say it, it just slivers out that worth. So that just about does it guys. I hope you enjoyed the review. Let me know what you think about the Note 10 and Note 10 Plus in the comments. Don't forget to hit subscribe while you're down there. And as always, thank you for watching. Peace.